All right, so free fall object act, um, acted only by gravity. Motion is completely vertical. It only goes up and down. We neglect air resistance. So we say that there's no air resistance. Okay. And acceleration on Earth due to gravity is a constant negative 9.81 uh, meters per second squared. In a pinch, when you're just in a hurry and doing stuff in your head, you can just say it's negative 10. Okay? Okay, so here's a little guy. He's got a ball, right? If he drops the ball, then the ball's initial velocity is zero. If he throws the ball, depending on which way he throws it, the V initial, it can be positive if he throws it up, or it can be negative if he throws it down. Okay? Oops. There we go. Okay. So, if he throws it up, I'm saying that my, my velocity go on the way up is positive, okay? And my displacement, I'm going to call that delta y now because we're only working in the vertical. So my delta y on the way up is also positive. At the top of any trajectory, when you throw something like up, does it keep going up? No, what does it do? It comes back down. So, it instantaneously stops moving and then changes direction starts to come back down. So at the top of any trajectory, your V initial, is, I'm sorry, your V final, sorry, your V is zero meters per second always. Okay? So if you were to throw this down or drop it, the velocity would turn negative and the displacement is negative because it's going down, okay? All right, and then terminal velocity, it's kind of easy. It's, it's constant velocity. So when the uh, force of air upward is equal and opposite to the force of gravity on your body, you don't stop moving, but you move at a constant velocity. So you feel like you're not moving. Like when your car is in cruise control, it feels like you're not actually moving. Okay, you're like you're just sitting in a chair until your mom hits a bump and then, yeah. um, but you get it. So that's how terminal velocity is. So you would be like falling, 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 and then suddenly it would feel like you slowed down and then you're not moving. Of course, it would be really loud because of all the air, but anyway. But that's, that's all terminal velocity is. You're not going to calculate it. It's just, it's just average velocity. Um, when we have to graph this, if a ball is thrown straight up and it falls right back down to the exact same spot. So your position time graph is actually kind of easy. When you throw something up, it slows down until it stops, and then it speeds back up, but in the negative direction. So that would mean that the slope of my x versus t graph, it will start out positive, then it will turn to zero, and then it will turn negative. So it looks literally how the thing is moving. It goes up, zero, down. Okay? So the V versus T, okay, it's going from some positive number to zero to some negative number. So it's going to be a straight line going from the positive quadrant across the zero, and it's going to keep going down into the negative, oh, it's supposed to be a straight line, I'm sorry, I can't draw straight lines. Okay, your acceleration versus time, well you know that your acceleration is constantly negative 9.81 on Earth, so it's just a flat line in the negative. No slope. That's it. Okay, so that's not too hard. Alright, so let's do a couple of example problems real quick. Okay. Alright, so first one. Okay, so an object is released from rest. Okay, so it's released from rest. So that means my V initial is zero on a planet that has no atmosphere. So there's no air resistance. The object falls freely for three meters. Okay, so my delta Y is negative three meters. Because it's falling down, its displacement is negative. Okay, in the first second. Okay, so my time is one second. 
what is the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity on this planet? So I'm looking for A. Okay, so I would probably just use the um, displacement equation. So my displacement equals V naught T plus A T squared over two. You can call the acceleration A or G because it's gravity, it doesn't matter. So if you see it that way in the book, that's all that means. So your V naught is zero, so this completely cancels out of the equation. So then displacement is just that. So I would multiply both sides by two and then divide by T squared to get A. Then you just plug it in. So it would be two times negative three over one squared. So two times negative three is negative six divided by one is negative six. But I want the magnitude, so I want the number without a negative. So it's just six meters per second squared. Cool beans? Okay, great. All right. Next one. Did I go too fast? So your, yes, your final answer is going to be six. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Last one for the day. So this is, you have a helicopter? And I, I can't draw helicopters, so I'm just going to make a circle and call it a helicopter. So here's my helicopter. And it has a five meter long rope attached to um, a package. The mass of the package doesn't really matter, okay? Yet. It doesn't matter yet. Um, none of the equations I've given you have anything to do with mass. Oops. So they will matter soon, but just not right this second. Um, okay. So that rope is five meters. So from here to here, that's five meters. It accelerates, the helicopter accelerates upwards at a rate of five meters per second squared. So my acceleration of the helicopter is positive 5.2 meters per second squared. We're neglecting air resistance. When the upward velocity of the helicopter is 30 meters per second, so that's positive 30. So my V initial, at this moment, the rope is cut, okay? So my V initial is positive 30 meters per second because it's going up and continues to accelerate upward of 5.2 meters per second squared. Determine the distance between the helicopter and the package two seconds after the rope is cut. So the helicopter, so the time is two seconds. I want to know displacement. Well, I also need to know the displacement of my package. So at the moment that the rope is cut, okay, it kind of looks like a person. All right, or a flower. No. Um, so at the moment the rope is cut, I want to know, okay, so what's my initial velocity of the package? It's not zero, okay? So, and, and you should go home and throw something and see that it, that's not how that works. As soon as the thing that's pulling it up lets go, it doesn't just suddenly stop and start to fall. It will continue to go up before it starts to fall. Like when you're sinking with a ship. Um, okay. Yeah, so when you're sinking with a ship, if, you, okay, if, you, if you've seen any like scene of a movie when you're sinking, you, you go down with the ship, but that's when that's when they ask you to jump out. Of that. So when you're, when you're right at the surface, you're supposed to jump because the pressure because the pressure created by the ship falling down, it's going to pull you down with it. It's basically the same thing, but in the opposite direction. Okay. So you're going up with it, and the package is going to I'm just going to finish this on our recording. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my V initial is still up, and it says still positive 30 meters per second. Okay? But now, what's my acceleration on the box if it's no longer attached to the helicopter? Negative 9.81. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then, my time is 2 seconds. I'm looking for my delta y. So, helicopter's delta y. V naught t plus a t squared over 2. So, I'm just plug that in.
four seconds. I'm gonna keep going and record. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna post this for you. So I think you get 70.4 yeah. meters. And then for the package, do the same thing. Welcome, see ya. Okay, so we get three point three eight. So now you just find the difference between these. And then add the five that you originally had. You're welcome. See you later. And you get 35.02. Okay. Oops. And that's it.